Well, warm welcome to today's talk. It's Wednesday, the 1st of February. Now, we now know that vitamin D supplementation provides substantial benefit in terms of reducing the risk of admission to intensive care during the coronavirus pandemic. 72% is the probable figure, certainly substantial. And it probably also gives us a 51% protection against death, vitamin D supplementation. Now, on this channel, we've been talking about vitamin D since we started the channel in 2007, a long time ago now, and we've been talking about it throughout the COVID pandemic period of time. Now we have this new meta-analysis from Italy, definite protection against admission to intensive care for patients that are ill or hospitalised. I now believe it's unethical for um, authorising bodies, Medicines and Healthcare Regulatory Authority and FDA and people like this around the world, not to advise vitamin D supplementation for poorly people and arguably for the whole population. I believe it's now unethical that they don't do that, but they're not doing that. They are recommending treatments that are less efficacious, um, but they're not recommending vitamin D. And vitamin D is safe and effective. We've got to be careful how we use the term safe, but vitamin D is about as safe as cabbage or eating eating anything else. It's just, it's just a nutrient, but we get it from the sunshine. That's why we're short of it. We're short of it in the Northern Hemisphere over winter because we don't get it from the sun. That's why we need to supplement it. Personally, at the moment, I'm taking 4,000 units of vitamin D a day. That's 100 micrograms. And I take that in combination with 100 micrograms of vitamin K2 as well. So let's look at the evidence here because it is now definitive. It's from this paper here. Uh, and it's uh, an Italian paper, leading uh, Italian uh, doctors and um, scientists. Why is it all that the, all this work comes from places? We're going to be looking at work, work from today from Spain, Saudi Arabia, Italy. Nothing from the United States, nothing from the United Kingdom. Why not? It really, it really begs that question, why not? Anyway, this is the paper here. All available, download it for yourself, PDFs available. Definitive evidence and meta-analysis and trial sequential analysis. Now, this trial sequential analysis is sort of an add-on to meta-analysis. And it allows us to uh, account for the uh, degrees of uncertainty in the data and to make predictions based on that. So it's really quite clever. Uh, thankfully, it's all done by, uh, by computer. Uh, there's programs to do it. Anyway, this is in Italy. So various studies have shown this association between vitamin D deficiency and bad outcomes. Vitamin D plays a crucial role in immune function and inflammation. Simple statement of fact. Recent data suggests the protective role of vitamin D against bad outcomes. That's what this study is about. And it found out, yes, it does protect. This is what we call a neutroceutical approach. So uh, nutrients, using nutrients as, as pharmaceuticals. It's a term I like. Now, of course, a lot of nutrients are necessary because if we're short of nutrients, then the immune system is not going to be optimised and not work in a proper way. But vitamin D, as well as optimising the immune system, actually has additional benefits in um, protecting against infection and also um, protecting against excessive inflammation and cytokine storms. So uh, production, uh, promote the immune response and reduce the inflammatory response. We know it does that anti-inflammatory it's also antioxidant when when you really produce a lot of waste free radicals and so to mop those up with antioxidants is a really good idea and it also has immunomodulatory properties this is now beyond speculation we are now in the realms of uh, definitive science in terms of these activities of vitamin d now Immune boosting and optimising immune function. Vitamin D maintains pulmonary barrier, so the organism's less likely to get in in the first place, in this case, sars coronavirus 2 But we now know that this works against a whole range of viruses and probably bacteria as well. This is for everything. COVID, yes, this data shows that it provides a 72% protection against people, that, against admission to intensive care in, uh, in SARS coronavirus 2 infection, but it also works against a wide range of other infections. We have to use this more widely. Um, determines the production of uh, antimicrobial peptides, so these are peptides of pro small proteins. Enhances neutrophil activity, essential uh, white blood cell, of course, and shifts the adaptive immune response to more T helper cells, T helper 2 cells. 
T helper cells promote all aspects of immunity. The T helper cells are a bit like a conductor. They conduct the immunological orchestra and uh, promote all sorts of immune function. Anti-inflammatory effects. Now, this is interesting. Uh, uh, vitamin D, adequate vitamin D, reduces the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines and increases the production of anti-inflammatory cytokines. So these are interleukins, various interleukins. These ones are um, pro-inflammatory. They increase inflammation. So vitamin D reduces their production. These ones here are anti-inflammatory cytokines. So the anti-inflammatory cytokines, their production is increased. So it reduces the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines. And uh, it increases the production of anti-inflammatory cytokines. So we don't get these cytokine, cytokine, cytokine storms that have been killing people. The lower the vitamin D at baseline, the more effective it is. Just think of all those poor people that died in nursing homes that have been stuck inside for the last year or two. Hadn't been exposed to any sunshine. The vitamin D levels will be in their boots. And uh, basically there was no substantial um, supplements given, despite what we were calling for very early on in the pandemic. Um, high risk interventions were carried out. Very, very safe interventions like vitamin D, zinc, basically ignored. It really is a scandal. It's a total scandal. Absolute disgrace. Uh, reduces asthma exacerbations, prevents acute respiratory infections, we believe of all sorts, certainly influenza as well as COVID. And w w influenza now, so t you know, we need to take vit we need to optimise the population's vitamin D levels to reduce influenza. And it reduces the complications of infections. Now, as well as that, this is another study here. A COVID-19 and vitamin D systematic review, another, another systematic review. The rates of... Uh, Positivity in the tests were significantly decreased in the intervention group as opposed to the non-intervention uh, group. So the, uh, the PCR tests were less likely to be positive. So vitamin D is actually protecting against infection here. Uh, relative risk uh, 0.46. So that's what a 54% protection against infection in the first place. Better than other treatments which are currently being recommended. Why is this not being shouted from the rooftops by our regulatory authorities, who I believe now are acting unethically in not uh, giving this advice? Uh, conclusively, this paper says, direct quote, a COVID-19 uh, patients supplemented with the vitamin D, fewer rates of ICU admissions, less mortality and uh, less positivity. Um well, well beyond the, the realms of speculation here. Meta-analysis and trial sequential analysis, getting back to the original paper that we're looking at. So they want to better explain the strength of the associations, which they can do, of the protective role of vitamin D supplement. And as we've said, they were examining risk of mortality and admissions to intensive care unit. This data was collected as a snapshot on September 20th, September 2022. So it was what information was available then. And they did all the risks of assessment. Um, now, the, 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 uh, how to adjust thresholds for significance in random clinical trials when the required sample size has not been reached. That's, that's this new trial sequence analysis bit that was added on. So it adjusts the threshold of significance. So it, it works out how significant the result is depending on the sample size. And of course, being a meta-analysis, it pooled all the samples as well got to samples that were definitively big enough and they definitively said it protects against intensive care admissions. We basically know this now. Uh, now, they looked at quite a few papers originally, but they settled on five randomised, main randomised trials. And here's the results, as we've said. Vitamin D administration, reduced risk of death 0.49, that's a 51% protection, isn't it? And um, against death and vitamin D administration resulted in a decreased risk of ICU admission 0.28 and as we said that's a 72% protection. Why is this not being used? A protective role of vitamin D in ICU admission. The, uh, the trial sequence analysis of the protective role of vitamin D in ICU admission showed that since the pooling of the studies reached the definitive sample size, so it's the definitive sample size was reached 
the positive association is conclusive. This is conclusive, according to this paper. Carried out in Italy, not carried out in the States, not carried out in Europe, not certainly not carried out in Canada, <laughs> or, or Australia or New Zealand. We're getting left behind, folks. We're getting left behind. Now, the studies, this was the first study here, interventional study. That one was, I've put the links, check on all these. I'm not making this up. Check it out. Conducted in Saudi Arabia. Next study was this one, uh, calcifidiol. Now, the calcifidiol is the already activated form. So, as you probably know, when vitamin D is produced in the skin or taken by mouth, it must go to the liver. It's activated into calcifidiol. That's the more active form. So if you want it to work more quickly in someone that's already ill, we can give them a, you can give co cocifidiol instead of the vitamin D. It'll be activated much quicker because sick people can't wait. So again, this could be used much more than it is. Why isn't it being recommended? Anyway, that study was done in Spain, not the English speaking countries. This uh, next paper was also done in Spain. This next paper was also done in uh, Brazil. And the final study they used was um, in Spain. Now, why is this not being used despite the definitive evidence conducted from this paper? Why is it not being advised? Why is it not being shouted from the hilltops? Um, I'm going to show you that in a minute. <laughs> um, well, on a completely separate topic, Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Authority in the United Kingdom is 80% industry funded. Of course, they have no vested interest. The, this is the national body that represents medicine, advises medicines and healthcare products throughout all of the United Kingdom. And it's 86% industry funded. Coincidentally, vitamin D which is basically free, it's dirt cheap and is essentially completely safe, is not recommended. Other interventions which are associated with high levels of risk are recommended. 86% industry funded. Why, when is this going to be addressed? This is outrageous. Now, I, did, I, didn't, mean, I meant, didn't mean to flash that before, but I, this is just a random street scene in uh, Manhattan. So let's look at a random street scene now in uh, Manhattan. Looks like a bit of a van. A few pictures on it. Oh, look, it's outside Pfizer World Headquarters. I believe this, uh, this video has veracity. Is that it's outside Pfizer World Headquarters. Anyway, in a completely separate matter, let's hope uh, there's not a scandal of uh, massive consequence and intercontinental implications brewing in uh, Manhattan. More on that tomorrow. For now, sorry a bit over-emotional today. I do try and keep it cognitive, but uh, it just gets to you from time to time things that we could, should be doing, but we don't bother. But there again, vitamin D is cheap, so why the heck should we? I've said enough. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching.